Well, our tip of the week I'm going to go through is creating daylight and view studies. And the way this works is um, first, there's a couple of ways, of course, that you create uh, daylight and view studies as part of the um, uh, lead or sustainable design requirements. Uh, one of you know very uh, one that people use quite often, uh, which really does require a lot of um, uh, high level knowledge, is doing sun studies. Uh, sun studies are created doing uh, using our um, camera tool or perspective projections or parallel projections. Um, typically, people take and put a camera onto a plan from a viewpoint where they're going to create uh, uh, a sun study projection, and then they define what how it's going to look. They then go into their project location settings, if they haven't already done this, and set up, uh, which is open by going to your options menu and project preferences. And then once you open up that um, project uh, location information, you can set uh, not only your name and, and site address, but also your latitude, your longitude, longitude what city it is in the, in the world, your time zone, your altitude in terms of from a sea level and your project north. This is really important because this allows you to set the specificity for where you are in the world, which of course is give you, will then be able to give you accurate interpretation of your sun setting. And you can also show that in Google Maps as well. Once you've created that information, we can then go into our sun setting uh, options and be able to create a sun setting. Um, to do that, you go to your document menu and to creative imaging, and then open up or select create sun study and then this dialog will open up. When you generate a sun study, you can generate that using the 3D window or the photo rendering window. You define what time of the year. You just find, is it from sunrise to sunset? Uh, and then also, uh, or, or even more specific actually, in terms of the time of day. Uh, if you're gonna do a movie, you can define all frames or actually use this also to, to save out um, images because not only can you do a movie, I can change the result here to be images that are saved out, which a lot of people will use for documentation for uh, a lead type of study. And you've also got some rendering formats and compression formats as well. As, a, uh, you know, as we were just discussing, you can also use this to create um, uh, schedules for daylight analysis as well. We could go in here, we could create a daylight schedule for uh, daylight and view some um, area calculations of spaces surface areas of glazing, or areas without uh, direct view. And, the, and, and this is the kind of information that I can pull from this for this daylight uh, view analysis. I can pull the space ID, uh, the space name, the space area square footage, the glazing area square footage, um, your type of glazing. This, these can be properties that can be added in, uh, as well as your TBIS and, and other information here as well. From the documentation side, I can use the floor plans uh, to evaluate sight lines. That's again another part of, of your of, of lead analysis, right? Uh, is to be able to ev ev evaluate sight lines. And of course, I can use the model to draw lines of, of sight to the uh, perimeter glazing, which is what these are showing with the red and green. Uh, the zones can be used to show without direct line of sight to perimeter glazing. That's where the red's showing. You can also use the building sections again to. Uh, do a section through the building and then show information for, um, uh, you know, sections showing uh, views at 40 inches above finished floor. So all this can also be developed directly out of the model as part of your documentation. And then again, as I was just mentioning before, not only can we do surface area glazing, we can also do area calculation spaces um, for uh, uh, area calculations by room or without direct view. And again, using our schedules, we can then set up a spreadsheet to kind of manage that information uh, that we then uh, drive from our model for room ID, names and areas, areas without direct line of sight to perimeter glazing, a horizontal view, and your compliant area. And then finally, as part of this tip of the week, is the ability to use uh, daylight and light simulation analysis using what's called IES profiles. If you're not familiar with this, IES stands, um, uh, is, it's part of the um, digital photometric data format. It's kind of a standard. It stands for Illuminating Energy Society. These, these, this is kind of the standard out there for creating um, 
what are called uh, 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 light shapes and forms. So if you want to bring in, for example, into ARCHICAD, we have an IES object in ARCHICAD as part of the light or lamp tool. And you can actually assign IES information to lights and lamps in ARCHICAD now, which is really uh, quite powerful. And those lights, when you do that, you can go to a, 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 a website, uh, such as the one I was just showing earlier, like the IESNA.org, um, or to specific manufacturers' websites, and you can download shapes of different types of um, lights and lighting that you might be using. And then when you do that, it then will, when you import that ARCHICAD, it's going to show different characteristics of that light in terms of how that light illuminates uh, below, um, direct and spot, in the cases of spots, or illuminates it more globally in the room, uh, depending on how the light has been set up. You can also use the IES for daylight and lighting studies. Uh, VLUX is a uh, software that you can um, purchase um, that will do analysis for uh, color imaging. Uh, this is a great one for kind of looking at, you know, what is the, um, uh, the energy coming in the room from the sun and from other lights in the room and how is that affecting your space. You could also use Radiance. Uh, this is um, from Morris Berkeley La National Laboratory. You can go here to radsite.lbl.gov slash radiance slash home. Uh, and this can be used, Radiance can be used also to do color imaging, uh, but it also can use, be used to do illumination contours, as you can see in this particular um, uh, rendering where it shows again where the yellow is the light coming in and as it fades off to the edge uh, that that light is less uh, intense.